I have a pressure tank, a cylindrical pressure tank, which is fabricated from a, a spirally wrapped metal plates. Assume that this is the plate that I have. Okay, so what we do is that we are wrapping that in this way and we are, you know, we are for welding each side to the other side and this is the way that we are building this. So we are welding that and we need to make sure that the stress developed at that welding point is not exceeding a certain limit. That is critical in designing this kind of structure. The tank has an inside diameter of 480 millimeter and the wall thickness of 8 millimeter. Determine the largest gauge pressure that can be used inside the tank if the allowable normal stress perpendicular to the valve is 100 megapascal and the allowable shear stress parallel to the valve is 25 megapascal. So this is interesting problem. This is very practical problem. Okay, so at the connection of these two plates, which they are connected through welds. I want to make sure that this stress, this normal stress, is not exceeding 100 megapascal, and this shear stress is not exceeding 25 megapascal. Okay? These are based on the material that I used for welding these two together. I want to see how much would be the maximum allowable pressure that I can put into this pressure vessel. Okay? Let me first write down the data that I have. So beta is 40 degree, so the diameter is 480, that means the radius is 240, and the thickness is 8 millimeter. Alright, and I know that the value of normal stress should not exceed 100 megapascal, and the value of shear stress is limited to 25 megapascal. Now, I want to solve this problem. The first things that I need to do is that I need to determine how much would, is the value of longitudinal stress and the hoop stress at that point. Okay, so that would be sigma x and sigma y. Stress in the x direction would be longitudinal stress and we remember that the longitudinal stress for this kind of element would be pr over 2t and I just need to plug the values here. P is something that I'm looking for. The radius is 240 millimeter and the thickness is 8 millimeter. All right, that gives me 15 P is the stress in the X direction. Now I will calculate the value of stress in the Y direction. So the value of a stress in the y direction would be a stress in hoop, which is PR over T. Okay? I don't need to calculate that because that would be twice of the previous stress. So that would be 30P. So I have calculated the value of the stress at this point. Um, the point that I'm talking about is here. So this is the stress element that I have. Stress in the x and y direction. And the value of shear stress is zero at that point. I guess it's clear for everybody. I'm talking about that plate, not the absolute in the three-dimensional stress element. So the shear stress at that point is zero. All right. Now, I want to rotate this element, and I want to see how much are the value of stress in the rotated element. So if that is x, and that is y, I want to rotate that by the angle of 40 and I would like to see how much would be the stress in the rotated axis. So I'm rotating that by the 40 degree and I want to determine the value of shear stress in that plane and the value of normal stress in that plane. Alright, so the second step would be stress transformation. The equation that I have for a stress transformation is this one. Stress in the n direction would be sigma x plus sigma y over 2 plus. Okay? So that is the stress transformation equation that I have. But there is a question. There is one question. What is the theta that I should use here? 
first let me talk about the uh, let me talk about the 100 megapascal the normal stress what theta should I use here let me call this axis as n and t okay which one should I use here should I determine the value of a stress in the n direction or t direction it should be in the t direction why because remember I'm talking about the stress developed perpendicular to the weld direction. So the perpendicular to the weld would be the T axis. Okay? So how much would be the theta for that one? Theta would be 90 plus 40. That would be 130. Okay? Or one option would be considering this one. And in this case, how much would be the theta? That would be negative 50. Okay? So I can go for either negative 50 or 130. Both works for me. Is that clear for everybody? All right. The theta that I have is either negative 50 or 130. All right. Let me use a negative uh, 50. I plug the value of sigma x and sigma y. How much is sigma x? It is 15p. How much is sigma y? It is 30p. Okay. So to make it a little bit more clear, let me take out the p and just work with that 15 and 30. Okay. So what do I have here is sigma n would be equal to sigma x is 15, sigma y is 30, over 2 plus 15 minus 30 over 2 times cosine of 2 theta and gamma xy is 0 because the you know I know that the shear strain at that point is 0 so that's it and I need to multiply that by p because in all of this I have p all right if I calculate the value of this term and multiply that by p, that gives me 23.8p. And I know that this one should be smaller than a level of stress, which in this case is 100 megapascal. So based on this criteria, the value would be 4.20 one megapascal which is equal to let me just round down the last one say 4.20 and that would be equal to 4200 kilopascal okay so that is the maximum pressure based on the first criteria for the second part I need to talk about the shear stress in the uh, theta direction. I need to determine how much is the value of shear stress in, the, in that element. Okay, What should I use as theta for this problem? 40. Okay. What if I use negative 50? Let us check. I think they both should give me the same number. Okay. So for this one, the shear stress can be calculated from this equation. Let me plug the values here. All right. Let me do the calculation. So here in this case, the value of shear stress, would, and I know that this one is limited to 25 megapascal. So from this criteria, so the maximum pressure that is allowable here would be 3. 38 megapascal, which is equal to 3380 kilopascal. So I have two criteria here. The first one, based on the maximum normal stress, the maximum allowable would be 4200. Okay? Based on the shear stress, that would be 3380. Which one is the final allowable stress in this problem? That would be definitely the lowest one. So this is the final answer of this problem. All right.